A very pleasant good morning to you ladies and gentlemen. Today is my last vlog for the year 2017. And I wanted this particular vlog to end on a very, very serious note that has been affecting our young women and young boys in Jamaica for a very long time. It has been affecting us for such a long time that it has become normal and people tend to sweep it underneath the carpet. We're talking about carnal abuse. We're talking about child molestation. We're talking about carnal knowledge of a minor. We're talking about incest. And we're talking about our society and even the government treat cases like these. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you two stories. And two stories, I don't mean stories in itself, but two facts about what happened to a four-year-old girl or what happened to a three-year-old girl and what happened to a 12-year-old girl. Let's get to the facts before I give you my commentary. Let's take a listen. Childhood stolen by a monster. Rape left 12-year-old child worried. More than 400 women and girls were raped across Jamaica this year included 12-year-old Alexia Parker, not her real name. Now eight months pregnant, Alexia is struggling to come to grips with the reality that her rapist has forever altered her life. It wasn't what I really expected, but I still have to accept it, said Alexia, who is scheduled to give birth in January, an experience she's not looking forward to. The pain that it takes to push another baby and after all of that, the long staying up at nights, then having to go to school and study, and all of that is hard work. Alexia was raped at her house a few minutes after her mother left her in the company of her two siblings and stepfather to go to the shop. Feeling that she would be safe while he went to take a shower at his sister's house nearby, her stepfather left her with her brother and sister. But shortly after, tragedy struck. I heard my cousin calling me and when I went outside and went to her and after I was coming back inside, I felt someone put their hand over my mouth and started to choke me with a piece of something around my neck. And that person started to draw me on the ground. I couldn't scream. My mouth was covered, recounted Alexia of her ordeal. She was threatened by her attacker who vowed that he would kill her mother and other members of her family if she screamed. And with the cold blade of a knife pressed against her neck, she didn't doubt that he would make good on his words. After the horrendous ordeal, Alexia had to next contemplate how she would share what happened with her mother, knowing that she could be putting her life at risk by saying anything at all. Afterwards, I was still worried. I was traumatized. And I was wondering what I should say to my mother. I wanted to tell her and I was scared. I did say to her in the end, but the way she reacted, she was upset, but not at me, Alexia told the newspaper. She had this nervous breakdown and for me to be standing and looking at my mother in that situation was very hard and I didn't want to have to see her in that condition, she added. Alexia is now a ward of the state and her case was investigated by the authorities and the alleged attacker held. But she did not want to address that as she is trying to focus on her baby. According to data from the Jamaica Constabulary Force, there were 429 reported rape cases in Jamaica between January 1st and December 16, 2017. Police statistics also revealed that 511 girls under 16 experienced sexual violations between January 2016 and February 2017. With the alarming number of sexual offenses cases flooding the courts, Director of Public Prosecution Paula Llewellyn revealed last week that plans are being made to establish a dedicated court to deal with these cases. According to the country's chief prosecutor, 
423 related cases were still down for trial when the home circuit court closed its Michaelmas term recently. These include 240 for the offense of sexual intercourse with a person under 16 years old, 90 rapes, 25 incest, and 20 for buggery. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that's the first case. Let's take a look now on the second case. And this one is even more horrendous than the first, if we can call it that. Let's take a read. Rape by my father. A woman claimed she endured three years of abuse. Following a social media post by a woman who claims that her father raped her for three years while she was a child, psychologist Dr. Patrice Charles said that there should be a national campaign to tackle a monster that is incest, which is quietly rampant in the country. Charles, who is the lead counselor at the Phoenix Counseling Center in Kingston, said that she regularly come across patients who are victims of incest. It is so rampant in Jamaica that it has become the norm. There are many parishes. When you go to St. Thomas, St. Mary, incest within the community is like the norm, she said. In the post, the woman who has also written a book detailing her experience showed a picture of her alleged abuser. She said that the man was convicted of raping another of his daughter, but is now out on parole. The star made unsuccessful efforts to contact the woman. In another video, she claimed that since the original post, several family members have told her that she is disgracing the family. Disgracing the family? She defended the post, saying that several persons had reached out to her, saying that her father has also raped them. At least four persons have reached out to me, saying that my father raped them, the woman said in her Facebook video. Charles believed that social media can be a tool through which awareness about incest in Jamaica can be raised. We need to turn the tide on incest in Jamaica and make it totally unacceptable. And so, if we can create that awareness through social media, it would be something powerful, Charles said. In comparing the situation in the United States, where several prominent men have recently lost their jobs because of accusation of sexual misconduct, Charles said that Jamaicans are still too slight with sexual abuse. We need to let people know that this is not okay. And even though I don't agree that a person who has been accused of rape should lose his or her life, I think that we are a little too lenient on persons who carry out these acts, Charles said. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I've just read to you two cases of two young ladies who will be scarred permanently. They will be scarred for life. What are we doing? How can we have a country as beautiful as Jamaica and our women who are supposed to be goddess being treated in this fashion? And we do not have a massive, yes, we do from time to time, uh, Betty Ann Blaine and so forth and others who are child advocate really do come out and I have to support them for their hard work in making this awareness. But enough is not done to scourge this monster, trap this monster, behead this monster and block this monster away for life. Our children are our future. I just mentioned two cases, ladies and gentlemen, about two young ladies, but we do have young boys who are molested by their next of kin, molested by friends, molested by guardians who are left to take responsibilities of these children. They're left in their care. So ladies and gentlemen, my take on this is, how come we do not have the government stepping in when they should? making these penalties so hard that one should not even think of molesting our children. Why we have to go through this every day, every week, every month, every year of our young girls and our young boys being molested by grown men. I've even heard of a case where a man said if you have sex with a, a virgin and you are affected with the HIV virus, you will be instantly cured. 
Can you understand this rubbish and this garbage that is being uh, uh, meted out to our children in Jamaica? We need to take a stance. And Jamaica, I'm telling you, if we sit like this, keep our mouth shut, not say anything, then guess what? We are doomed to fail as a country. It's coming to the end of the year. Today is December 31st, one day before 2018 steps in. And I'm appealing to you. I'm appealing to every single family members, every single neighbors, every single teachers, because these are the points where people can actually see changing in our young ones. Because someone who is forcefully uh, uh, molested, raped, boogered, you can see changing in them. Their mannerisms are, are not the same, ladies and gentlemen. You'll see them become um, uh, withdrawn. Uh, they be, they'll become um, somewhat edgy. They're not learning. They're not retaining anything. So it's very easy for you to recognize a toddler, a baby, when one is molested. Pay attention to your young girls when you're bathing them. You know, take a t uh, pay attention to the offices of your young boys when bathing them because these are telltale signs that your child is being molested. And guess what? We know the penalties are harsh, but they should become even harsher. I personally recommend public whipping. Yes, if you molest a minor, you should be taken to the town square where everybody gathers around and you'll be whipped with 50 lashes. That's my personal take on this. Because guess what? You see, if we don't take care of our children, if we don't respect our children, if we don't honor and treat our children with the ultimate love and care that they so justly deserve. Because remember, these children did not ask to be here. These children did not ask to be here. You went out there. You found a partner. Sometimes the partners that you all choose are very responsible partners. Some women just lie down with anybody. Some men just lie down with anybody. They don't even check about a background of a woman. You don't even check about the background of the man that you're dealing with. Sometimes you bring a total stranger in your house and then you leave these strangers to take care of your children. A couple of years ago, this woman met this man in St. Anne. She had twin uh, uh, children, a boy and a girl, age nine. And she allowed this man to influence her to a dance. You left your nine-year-old twin unattended to go to a dance with a man you just met. And ladies and gentlemen, the horrific thing happened. This nine-year-old, I cannot forget her name, Nevalisha Lewis. She was brutally murdered and bludgeoned to death. Jamaica, we need to wake up. 2018. We need to wake the fuck up because if we don't wake the fuck up, our children, which are supposed to be our future, are doomed. I am doing my part and I will continue to do my part to make sure I teach, to make sure I bring to the public uh, the necessary awareness, um, to make sure I do my part so that our children can live a nice, happy and healthy life. As we draw into 2018, I want to take this opportunity and thank all of my fans who stood there with me. My new subscribers, thank you very much for coming on board. I'm about knowledge. I'm about teaching. And I want to thank all of you. There's so much of you. Over 6 million views. Over 12,700 subscribers. I want to thank each and every one of you for coming to my channel, for allowing me to continue to do this, to appreciate the work that I'm doing. I've gotten so much uh, commendation from people I don't even know, from people all over the world who are lauding me as governor, who are lauding me as prime minister. These accolades are great, ladies and gentlemen, but these are accolades that I really don't want because these accolades sometimes are politically driven and once you get involved with politics, you cannot do what you're supposed to do. I'm doing what my heart desire. I'm doing it because I love it. I do it because I love my country. And I'm doing it because I love my people. Jamaica, I want you to have a blessed, a blessed 2018 when it comes. 
Let's look back at the past and know that we have slaughtered over 1,608 Jamaicans. For what? You know, we've killed a lot of children. For what? You know, so let's wake up and let's bring 2018 to a great year. A great year for our children, a great year for our country, and a greater year for our people. Thank you very, very much for watching. And I do hope that all of you, all over the world, Jamaicans scattered far and wide, can have a beautiful 2018 when it comes. Thank you very much for watching. And I do hope that you all can have a great day. Thank you.